believe all those clips you just saw were generated by AI? That's right, every single one of them was created using Google VO3. Today, I'm going to show you how to use VO3 step by step. This video is split into two main parts. In the first half, we'll cover the basics, what VO3 can do, and how to get started. And in the second half, I'll share some advanced tips to help you generate even better, more polished AI videos with VO3. All right, so VO3 is an advanced AI video generation model launched by Google DeepMind in May 2025. What makes it so impressive is, first, native audio generation. It can automatically add ambient sounds and background effects based on the video it generates. You can even specify dialogue or the type of music being played, just like this. The microfilm is in your ticket. They're watching the north exit. Use the service tunnel. Second, ultra-realistic visuals. Not only is the image quality way better than VO2, but the details like lighting, textures, and movement are even more refined. The overall physics and realism are just on another level. Unlike ChatGPT, which sometimes blocks images for... According to Google DeepMind's official site, there are six different platforms. We'll be covering Flow, Gemini App, and Google Vids in today's video. As for Google AI Studio, it still only supports the previous VO2 model. Gemini API and Vertex AI Studio are aimed more at enterprise users. We'll go over those in a future video. First, let's start with something we're more familiar with, using VO3 inside Google Gemini. Go to gemini.google.com. In the chat box, down at the bottom left, you'll see an option called Video. Generate with VO3. Right now, this feature is only available for Google AI Pro or Ultra users. Also, there's a usage limit. For Pro users, it's about three times per day. Keep in mind that the VO mode in Gemini is limited to VO3 fast. If you use it on Flow, you'll also get access to VO3 quality, which offers even better image quality and more detailed visuals. We'll go over that later. All right, let me show you a quick demo. I ask VO3 to generate a video of a husky chasing a frisbee thrown by its owner by the lake with a warm sunset glow in the background. Using VO3 fast, it takes about one to two minutes to finish generating the video. The husky itself looks super realistic and the lake and sunlight in the background are also really well rendered. Plus, even though I didn't specify any background sounds, VO3 automatically added fitting environmental audio to match the scene, even though some parts don't quite match up. Aside from generating videos directly from text, there's also an add photo option here. This lets you upload an image and then create a video based on it. For example, I upload a photo of cherry blossoms in full bloom, and I ask VO3 to turn it into a cinematic-style clip with petals gently falling. At the same time, I also specify the style of the background music I want. Okay. The way the branches sway and the petals fall looks really natural. And on top of that, there's background music that perfectly matches the mood of the scene. Now let's jump over to VO3 in Flow and keep going. I will drop the Flow web link in the description below, or you can just search for it on Google. When you land on the Flow homepage, you'll see a collection of videos you've previously generated. For now, let's click Create a new project to start a new one. In the top left corner of the chat box, there's a menu with three options, text to video, frames to video, and ingredients to video. The first two work pretty much the same way as VO3 in Gemini. As for ingredients to video, this lets you upload multiple photos and specify which elements from the photos should appear in the final video. But this feature is currently only available for Google AI Ultra users. On the top right of the chat box, you'll find the settings menu. Here, you can choose the VO model, VO3 fast, VO3 quality, or the older VO2 model. When you're using VO3 in Flow, each video you generate will cost credits. If you're a Google AI Pro subscriber, you get 1,000 credits per month. 
Ultra users get 12,500 credits per month. Choosing VO3 fast costs 20 credits per video, and choosing VO3 quality costs 100 credits per video. From that difference, it's pretty clear that VO3 quality delivers higher quality, more professional videos. If you ever run low on credits, you can also purchase more. The smallest top-up is $25 for 2,500 credits. Right above the model selection, you can also choose how many videos you want Veo to generate each time you send a prompt, anywhere from one to four. Generating multiple videos at once gives you more options to pick the best one, but the downside is you'll burn through your credits much faster. If you're still experimenting, I'd recommend just sticking to one video at a time. Okay, now let's do a quick demo. I want to test VO3's ability to generate a scene with live music, specifically a rock band performing at a concert. I'll make sure to describe all the details as clearly as possible, and then, at the end, specify the camera angle I want for the shot. Let's take a look at the generated result. And I can't find my way in this endless night. The effect is actually pretty good, and the video does include different camera angles, just like I asked for. Now let's compare the difference between VO3 fast and VO3 quality. For this test, I use a scene of a young woman ordering a cappuccino at a cafe as the example. First, let's generate the clip using VO3 fast. Then I enter the exact same prompt, but this time switch the model to VO3 quality. Right away, I can clearly feel that the video generation speed is noticeably slower. All right, the clip generated with VO3 quality is also ready. First, let's take a look at the video made with VO3 fast. I'd like a cappuccino to go, please. Coming right up. You can see that the character's lip movements while speaking aren't very clear or accurate. And when she's picking up the coffee, there's a bit of a glitch. The cup that was originally on the table suddenly overlaps with the one in the barista's hand, and the lid on the cup just kind of pops into place out of nowhere. Sometimes, with complex actions, VO3 Fast can produce these kinds of noticeable errors. Now, let's look at the video generated with VO3 quality. Hi, can I get a cappuccino to go, please? Coming right up. Here, the lip movements and the handoff of the coffee to the young woman look way more natural. So usually, when I'm still testing ideas, I'll start with VO3 fast. Then, when it's time to generate the final version and I need higher quality and a more polished look, I'll switch to VO3 quality. Next, in the top left corner of your generated video, there's an Add to Scene button. Clicking it will take you to the Scene Builder page. Here, you can do some simple editing with multiple clips you've already added, and you'll also find the Jump To and Extend functions. Jump To lets you generate a new scene based on a specific frame. By default, it will continue from the last frame of the previous clip. But you can also choose a different frame as the first frame to jump to. For example, you might want a frame where the character's face is clearly visible. Just go to that frame, hit Save Frame as Asset, and then replace the original first frame. This way, the next clip you generate will keep the character consistent. Like in my case, I'm continuing the scene of the young woman ordering coffee. After she gets her coffee, I want her to walk out of the shop and stroll down the city streets. All right, let's check out the result. Can I get a cappuccino to go, please? Coming right up. The first few seconds feel a bit disconnected, so I just trim that part off. With the Jump to feature, you can seamlessly transition from the previous clip and keep generating a video that feels connected, helping you complete the story you want to tell. As for Extend, it lets you lengthen the existing scene and show more actions. Right now, though, this feature is only supported by the VO2 model, so the generated footage won't have any sound. But I'm pretty sure VO3 will support the Extend feature soon. Let's take a look at the result from Extend. It actually looks really smooth. 
All right, next let's create a new project and try out the frame to video feature. Here, you can either upload one photo to use as the first frame or upload two photos to set as the first and last frames. However, at the moment, VO3 only supports one photo as the first frame. If you want to specify both the first and last frames, you'll have to use VEO2, which means the generated video won't have sound again. By the way, you'll notice there are different camera movement options you can choose from here. Okay, now I have a photo of a food bowl filled with cat food, and I want to turn it into a short cat food commercial. The idea is to have three cats walk into the scene and start eating, along with a slogan at the end. I switch the model back to VO3 quality. All right, let's take a look at the result. Perfectly delicious. Happy cats. Not bad at all, right? And that's pretty much all the main features of using VO3 in Flow. Aside from using VO3 in Gemini and Flow, you can also access it inside Google Vids. Not a lot of people know about vids. One big advantage of using VO3 here is that you can generate more videos without using any credits. Personally, I haven't run into any usage limits so far. However, the downside is pretty clear. The video quality is noticeably lower compared to what you get when generating videos in Flow. You can access Google vids from Google Drive by clicking New and selecting vids, or just go directly to docs.google.com videos to log in. Vids has a lot of other features, but today we'll focus on creating video clips with Veo. You can also find the Veo option in the menu on the right-hand side. On the top right, you can choose the Veo model, so let's switch it to Veo 3. Down here, you'll find some sample ideas you can use for inspiration. Let me give you an example and allow me to quickly plug our channel here. I ask for a professional looking woman to face the camera and say, remember to subscribe to AI Tool Journey. Once the video is done, you can hit insert to add the clip to the timeline below. Here, you can do some simple editing or even generate new clips and add them into a new scene. But vids doesn't have advanced features like frame to video or jump to for scene transitions like Flow does. When you're done editing, Hit play in the top right to preview your video. Remember to subscribe to AI Tool Journey or join as a member to help us create more high quality videos. Usually when I want to try out different ideas but don't want to burn through my flow credits, I'll come here to vids and experiment first. Okay, that pretty much wraps up using VO3 in Google vids. Now let's move on to the next part, where I'll share how to write better prompts to improve the quality of your VO3 videos. Tip number one, learn from the VO3 prompt examples. On the Google DeepMind website, you'll find lots of high quality videos, and each one has the full prompt listed underneath for reference. Also on the Flow homepage, there's a Flow TV button in the top right corner. Inside, you'll find tons of VO videos. Click this button to expand the prompt. Here, the videos are organized into different channels by category, so you can scroll up and down to switch between them, or just click all channels on the left to see everything. At the top, there's also a search bar where you can type in keywords to quickly find related videos. Tip number two, use Google Gemini to help you write prompts. In fact, all the prompts I used in the earlier demos were written by Gemini, I just gave it a simple idea, and then Gemini filled in all the missing details for me. If you think you'll need Gemini's help to write prompts regularly, I'd recommend creating a GEMS assistant. Specify that it's a professional photographer and an AI prompt engineer. That way, it can craft really polished prompts for you. If you feel like the instructions aren't detailed enough, you can click here and have Gemini rewrite them for you. Once you're happy with it, hit save, then start chat. From there, just give it a simple concept, like, I want movie-level explosion scenes. Gemini will ask you follow-up questions for more details, and after you answer them, it'll generate a highly detailed prompt for you. Tip number three, understand the basic elements that make up a scene. When writing a prompt, it's best to include, first, background, characters, actions, and overall atmosphere. Second, camera angles and camera movements. Third, dialogue, ambient sounds, and background music. And last, the style or tone of the video. The more detailed your description is, 
the more accurate and polished the final video will be. With VO3, as long as you have a good idea, you can create high-quality videos. Of course, there's still some cost involved, like buying enough Google AI credits, but the expense is definitely way lower than the cost of an actual video shoot. That said, VO3 still has some limitations. Complex actions can sometimes have noticeable glitches. The videos are currently limited to 8 seconds long, and in Flow, there are still certain features the VO3 model can't use yet. But I'm confident these issues will get better as the technology continues to improve. All right, that's it for today's deep dive into Google VO3. If you'd like me to do a more in-depth breakdown of any part of VO3, feel free to let me know in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and hit the notification bell so you won't miss the next useful video. See you next time. Bye.